Hi, my name is John Rinaldi. I'm in the, uh, the video production area of real-time automation today, and we're going to talk about electrical interfacing of, of uh, different kinds of transmission systems. So, you know, in the last video, I talked about UARTs and serial communications and how UARTs create a stream of bits that has to go out whenever, time, whenever ever you're sending data off. Even if you're sending it to another computer, you're sending it over the Internet, over CAN, over Modbus, doesn't matter. Today, we're going to talk more about, now, electrically what happens. So anytime we've got some kind of processor, and that processor has a UART, which in my last video I said was universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. They all have UARTs for serial communications. That thing is going to send out some bit stream. So some set of ones and zeros. Now, now that bit stream is, is just a set of, of electrical signals that are referenced to the uh, electronics of the microprocessor. In today's electronics, these things are typically going to be 3.3 volts, either 0 or 3.3 volts to send the bits out. Well, that's not what goes out on a serial communications network. It doesn't go out over CAN or anything else. So there's something that has to take that and turn it into an electrical signal that, that can be transmitted from, from one place to another. A 3.3 volt signal wouldn't get very far if you tried to transmit this over, say, 200 feet of cable. There's just not enough power there. It's not, there's not enough power in the, in, the, in the transmitter of the microprocessor to get that data that far. So what we have is some kind of physical interface. And you could call that, generally that's some kind of phi for, for physical interface. So what that does is takes in the bit stream from the microprocessor, 0, 1, 0, 1, whatever it is, and sends it out as an electrical, as an electrical signal at the voltage that's needed to go on, 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 a, on a wire and go so that it can be received by one or more other devices someplace else on the wire. Now there's a couple of different standards here that I want to talk about. So let's talk about first is what's RS-232? What's interesting about these standards, that's, a, that's an electrical standard for the drivers, the physical drivers that put these electrical signals, signals out on the wire. RS-232, the characteristics of RS-232 are point-to-point -point communications. It's designed to not be the drivers, the electrical drivers in here are not designed to be sent to lots of devices. They're designed to be sent to one device. Typically in an RS-232 system, you have a transmitter, a receive line, and a ground. And that, and that goes to a receiver, a transmitter, and a ground on the other side. Okay, what you see here is I connected the transmitter to the receive, the receive to the transmitter, and the ground to the ground, or common to common. That's the, this is called... A crossover, this is a crossover cable essentially, what's happened here. Is because of course you when you send when data is sent on the transmitter, it's got to go into the receiver on the other side. Very clear. RS-232. Uh, this is the first thing you have. Now there are some control signals. There's clear to send, data terminal ready, a bunch of other control signals that get involved in this too. Don't have time to discuss those today. But the basics of RS-232, point to point. The transmitters are generally designed to only go maybe 50 feet, another characteristic of RS-232. So we're talking about short distance communications. Here's the big problem that you have with RS-232. So we've got one device here, got another device here, and we connect up these three lines. So if this guy is put sending a, a, a one out, that's, that's referenced to the, to the common. So essentially, if, if the receiver is going to measure this voltage between here and between here, fine. Okay, you say that's fine. What's wrong with that? Well, the problem is when you get noise. So if there's a little bit of noise in this system, 
maybe there's a motor nearby and in an industrial environment we're going to have noise because we've got lots of things going on and off. Every time you generate something on and off there's some kind of electromagnetics. Those things get in, picked up by these wires and that could force the signal down. So now, you know, it's kind of iffy. That thing that we thought was a one is now been is now in reference to this as well. Is that going to be picked up as a one or not? Or not? Yeah, it's a problem. You know, the, the more noise there is, the less number. And we talked about my last video that there's a, a particular number of data bits you're supposed to get. There's a particular parity bit. There's a number of things. This guy's probably not going to receive this this byte string because of that noise. So with RS-232, it works great for low noise environments, things that are connected when they're close together, but it's it's not at all good for noisy environments. So in the in our factory environment, like the stuff that RTA makes, very seldom um, is RTA is RS-232 used. It's only used when we're pretty confident that we've uh, aren't going aren't to get a lot of noise, aren't going to see a lot of errors. If you do, then we have to do something else. And with that other thing that's typically used is RS-485. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what RS-40, characteristics of RS-485. So with RS-485, the big thing with RS-485, it's multi-drop. It's like this. Multi-drop. With that means that there's one guy transmitting and everybody else is listening. One transmitter and receivers. That's the big, that's the big differentiator for RS-485. This is what's called half-duplex transmission. Half-duplex because you only have one communication going out at a time. The transmitter sends something out. All the receivers are listening. The receiver then gets a message. He becomes a transmitter, sends something out while everybody else is listening, including the old transmitter. So this is half duplex communications. With RS-232, we had full duplex communications because we had a receive and a transmit line. The one transmitter from the first unit could be transmitting the same time that the transmitter from the other guy was transmitting because the lines weren't crossed. Here we're using the same lines. It looks like this. We've got now, we've actually just got two lines. We've actually just got two lines that connect all of our devices up. So initially, this guy's the transmitter. And most of these systems are going to be master slave. The transmitter is going to orient these lines and his drivers, his electrical drivers, are going to send data out while those guys are in listening mode. Then there's going to be a turnaround time. And the turnaround time is one of the places where things get screwed up. Because this guy is going to send the last bit. When he sends the last bit, he's now got to turn his drivers around and start listening. If these guys send before he turns his drivers around and start to listen, goes into listen mode, he might miss the first bit. He misses the first bit, all bets are off. No, nothing's going to happen. So that's one of the, the deficiencies of, of getting an RS-485 network together, is that you've got to get that turnaround time right. Now here's the big advantage to RS-485. So what's going on here is initially, this guy's going to transmit, those guys are going to receive and say, this guy got the message. Well, then what happens is he goes, he turns his drivers around to become a receiver. This guy turns his drivers around to become a uh, transmitter, and now the same process happens. He's, he sends, and both these guys are listening. And typically there's some kind of address in the message so they know, oh, this is for me. And this is, this is exactly how Modbus works. The master device is going to send a message out. All the slaves are going to listen. The slave, the slave that gets the message is going to say, oh, that's for me. He's going to go into transmit mode. He's going to go into receive mode. And the master is the only one that's going to actually process the message because the other slaves realize that this is a reply message. Okay, but now how does this work with the... We, we saw at RS-232 that there was this bad problem with noise. Well, here's, here's the interesting thing about this. We get noise on here. 
we get a spike. What happened? We still have the same amount of distance, the same amount of voltage differential between both lines. Even though there's a spot, even though there's a motor or something else caused a spike in the communications line, induced a voltage, it gets induced in both lines the same amount, so nothing happens. If this was a zero, it stays a zero. If it was a one, it stays a one. So it cancels out the noise because it gets induced in both of them. So that's the, that's a huge advantage of 485 noise immunity. Now the other thing that has to happen is this because this can go a lot long, longer than RS-232. These drivers are built to go, because you've got multi-drop connected lots of devices, a thousand feet. But what happens in electrically is you get reflections on this. When this guy sends his message out, it, 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 it can reflect the bits back toward him and he can say, Oh, wow, I'm, you know, I'm getting the message back right away. Well, what, to get around that is you put termination resistors here, both at both ends of the network, never in the middle, always at the ends. The termination resistors essentially eat up that excess, that, that excess and stop that bits from being echoed. So there's no more echo and makes, the, um, makes, this, makes it work right. Now, this is typically 120 ohms or something on each end. Now a lot of people get that wrong and you know one of the things that people that's really screw this up is sometimes you buy a device and there's a, a built-in resistor inside of it. Well that screws everybody up because if you put that device in the middle now you know sometimes there's a switch or a jumper to get that to get rid of that. Well this is that that doesn't work real well so uh, hopefully you're not going to get a device that has a, that has a resistor in the middle. So that, so that's the difference between full. You know, so this is half duplex communications. RS two thirty was full, was was full, was full duplex communications, and I think that takes care of, you know, my brief explanation of RS two thirty two four eighty five and how we go from bits that are generally zero to three point three volts at the processor voltage level, some kind of phi that's going to send out that has drivers that's going to send out data on 232 and 485 on those various kinds of serial networks like Modbus. So thank you very much for, for listening to another one of my videos, and I hope you'll stay tuned for more videos in the future. Beware the alligators!